One of the candidates who, when I encounter Democrats, they say is the one they're actually scared of, uh, has pulled into second place in Ohio. And I wanted to get him on the show. The, the Democrats think he's just probably uh, a better fit against Tim Ryan, the Democrat who's probably going to be the nominee there. And, and they're hoping he loses. And so I hope he wins. And uh, his name is Matt Dolan, and he joins me by phone. How are you? Hey, Eric. Good. How are you doing? Great. Uh, so let me ask you just uh, the overview of your race. It, it's it's kind of fascinating to me. Uh, President Trump, of course, came out, endorsed J.D. Vance the other day. He kind of pulled into first, but there's this cluster of, of all of you tied in second place. And, you know, I've seen uh, Mike Murphy's tweet and, and a number of Democrats I've talked to have said you're probably – a really good fit against the democratic opponent. And they're, they're, they're really kind of scared. You might win this thing. Well, they should be. Uh, but the reason is, is because I'm the only one on the Republican side talking about Ohio fighting for Ohio. I have conservative results in the Ohio Senate and the Ohio house. And I have private sector experience. So I bring I know both sides of the paycheck. So I think voters are responding to me, and you, you said it off the top. I mean, we have outsiders. We have Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates coming in to Ohio to tell Ohioans how they should vote for J.D. Vance. Ohioans don't even know. Now we have to rely on outsiders, and Josh is closing with Ted Cruz coming in. I mean, this is about Ohio, Eric. This is a, the next U.S. senator from Ohio. It better know Ohio, better know Ohio issues, and that's why I'm rising up in, in the polls, and I'm going to finish first next Tuesday because I'm the one that has conservative results. I'm the one that doesn't have to change my message to beat the Democrats. Now, let's let's talk about Ohio because, you know, when when I get on candidates uh, running nationwide uh, and I say, what's your issue? It's always, well, it's it's Joe Biden. It's the Democrats. It's the left's agenda. What about Ohio? Uh, What's the big issue in Ohio that, that you would focus on? Well, uh, you can't separate the two. I mean, the, Ohio is an all-the-above energy state. We are blessed with every source of energy creation you can think of. But when the Biden administration on day one shut down Ohio workers uh, and shut down Ohio development of energy, you know, he, he not only raised inflation across the country, he certainly raised it here in Ohio, but he shut jobs down. Now we have a Democratic administration wants to shut down Line 5, which is a distribution pipeline to a refinery in northwest Ohio thousands of jobs at, at, at stake. So th- that's front and center. Inflation's front and center. You know, border security is front and center in Ohio because I know law enforcement. I was a prosecutor. Now I work with them in my legislative capacity. And Eric, 2021, Ohio had the most overdoses from fentanyl in the history of our state. And as I walk, you know, go around the state, talk to sheriffs and police chiefs, most of whom are supporting me, they're saying it's coming from the border. These dealers are coming right up from, from Mexico into Ohio, and people are dying. So people want – Republicans want somebody to execute, Eric. We had everything. We had the House. We had the Senate. We had the White House in 2017. Why didn't we get the border secured? Why didn't we pass Trump's plan, put it into law? I mean, that's what people are talking about, their, their financial security and their border and neighborhood security. Now, you've got a background as a lawyer and in, in business. Uh, I know your family is tied to the Cleveland Guardians. In the private sector with the economy, the way it is shaped right now, I want to talk to you because I'm getting a ton of phone calls from people on the issue of bailing out student loans. And it seems to me that that would, in addition to inflation and everything else, this is we're kind of rewarding people who went into debt and punishing the people who either paid off their loans or, or never got into debt in the first place. seems like those priorities are really mixed up. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I am against uh, uh, excusing student debt loans. Uh, we already have administration that has disincentivizing going to work, getting in, in the private sector. Instead, they want to rely on government. This is another step. This is the ability for someone to say, hey, I really don't have to work now because I don't have my responsibilities to meet. And then, Eric, if you're 21 years old, 23 years old, you get this debt excused by the government. What, what's going to – when you're 27 and you have a house debt, I don't, I don't feel like paying, paying it anymore. You know, is, are we constantly going to be looking at the government to bail us out? 
you know, I, I'm a partner in a law firm, and there was nothing more attractive to us than a, than a young lawyer who went out and mortgaged, got a house with a mortgage. We know that young lawyer is going to be incentivized to work. Uh, we, we've got to make sure Americans stay incentivized to work. Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm hearing you talk about a law firm. I was a lawyer for six years, and, and I'm sorry. I, I'm glad I lucked into radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not for everybody. I, I, I figured I'd get the JD and go to Washington and get involved in politics. And then I married a woman who didn't want to move to Washington. So I had to be a lawyer. <laughs> um, well, it, it is a, t- it is a tough business. You've got to be tough to, to be a successful lawyer, but you also have to work to get things done. And, and that's the same talent that I'll, that I take to the legislature. And we'll take to Washington. Now, let me ask you about the, the, the pro-life movement in Ohio. Some have been critical of you for not voting for a piece of pro-life legislation. And, and as I understand it, uh, you didn't vote for it because you knew it wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, and, and I want to just let you explain to people who I know one of your opponents is attacking you as not being pro-life when I know that you are and, and wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm the only one that can point to real pro-life uh, uh, results. Uh, there, you know, some of them are even in Ohio where I'm working on the pro-life movement. So if you want someone who's pro-life, look at his record. I have voted for and worked on 13 pro-life uh, bills, all of which became law, all of which survived liberal attacks by the court uh, and have done what we wanted it to do. And that's, Eric, over the course of my time in the legislature, abortion in Ohio has gone down 40%. I have been fortunate enough to be asked to lead the, the state budget process three times. In each of those budgets, we have invested in crisis pregnancy centers around Ohio, uh, which make sure that the, the mother carries the baby to term and they have the proper health and wellness uh, before and after the birth. I have been singular focused on what works. There are a lot of bills that come before us which sound good and are you know, help the movement, but they do not pass legal mustard and they they pass and they never go anywhere. And, and there's, there's a case where that's, we have bills that have not been enacted at all because they get shot down in the courts. Planned Parenthood raises money off of them. Uh, and we, we don't move them. We don't move the movement forward. For example, and I'll be quick here. The, when I talk to people about pro-life, I say, how many of you realize that the laws in Ohio, we've made it 20 weeks, viability is at 20 weeks. We're one of, I believe, six states that has it there. And most people don't know it, Eric. You know why? Because Planned Parenthood didn't sue on that one. They did not sue. So we got into place, and we've been reducing uh, abortions. Now, of course, they sued at 15 weeks with Mississippi and the voice, or the, uh, the case before the Supreme Court. We'll see what happens. And, and uh, hopefully the states will have an ability to end, uh, end abortion. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, I totally get that, by the way. I, I appreciate it. And yeah, I, I hate giving the left the opportunity to fundraise in a situation. And uh, while fundraising in that situation, us not being able to put points to the board. Real quick, before you get off of here, um, I, I've always been fascinated with Ohio, a state I haven't traveled to as much as I need to, particularly given the number of listeners I have up there. Uh, but you've got kind of the, a, a, a Rust Belt Ohio and a technology Ohio. You've got an Ohio uh, up in Cleveland that that's, um, it, it, I mean, just south of Detroit almost. Uh, how do you uh, navigate the different divides within Ohio to try to d- prioritize the things that you think uh, the voters of Ohio really do care about, particularly when even within Ohio there are so many regional divides? Well, you obviously do know Ohio. We, we, we do have regional divides, but we're unified by the same message. Lower taxes, less regulations, workforce development, all of the above energy, good infrastructure, no matter where in Ohio. If we create an Ohio like that, we're, we're vital for businesses. I've been a part of all of that. Intel's coming to Ohio, which is the largest microprocessor because of our, because of our economic climate. That's what we need to do in Washington to make sure that more manufacturers come back to the United States, create American jobs, have a new trade alliances with countries other than China. Well, look, uh, I don't want to keep you uh, longer than I have. It's been terrific to talk to you. And best of all, I, I know the election is next week, and I know you guys are all very clustered there in second place behind J.D. And I don't have a problem with J.D. I just I, I have found it remarkable the number of Democrats I know who have been keeping their eye on you in the race, breathing a sigh of relief, and then all of a sudden you've surged, and they're kind of freaked out about it. And I kind of like it when Democrats get freaked out, so hopefully you'll keep freaking them out. <laughs> Me too. we gotta keep, we got to keep that majority. Absolutely. I get that majority. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You, Eric.